Hi everyone, I'm Maggie Weldon from Maggie'sCrochet.com and we're going to show you five videos that all have to do with cleaning, like spring cleaning. And three of them are um, using nylon netting. So there's uh, three options here. You could buy netting by the yard at the store and there's several colors available and it's very, very inexpensive. And you could buy several yards of netting and you could cut the netting, I think it's about two inch strips. We're gonna go to close up and show you how to make everything that you um, see me showing here. But anyway, you could cut it with scissors and make short strips if you fold it on this um, edge. Or let's say you buy two or three yards, you could open the whole thing up and fold it the length of your um, netting and then you'd have longer strips. But either way, it will work. And you can cut this with scissors or what I like to do is use a cutting mat and a razor knife and I take a ruler and I lay it on the mat um, over the netting at the two inch mark or whatever mark that is and then I just cut it and I'll go to a close up and show you how to do that. So um, that's how you make this type of scrubby. Now if you just don't want to even cut netting at all we do sell netting that's already um, pre-cut. This is three inches wide I believe and it is just so, so easy to just, um, you can make three scrubbies this size out of one um, skein of netting. So this is really, really the easiest way to go. And the scrubby comes out just as good as um, the netting that you buy by the yard. It's just as um, stiff. And I've been testing this out and I made one for Han Yeti here and he likes it too. Um, so, and then I've made them for family and friends and they love them. So then you could take the scrubby and we're gonna show you another, a third video in how you add the flower to the outside edge. So you can make like a sunflower. And there's like a little blue flower here. <laughs> so um, that's fun and it's great um, to give away as gifts. And then there are two dishcloths. Uh, there's this one, the uh, colors landed up looking like uh, candy corn here. And then um, this is the same dishcloth um, done in different colors of yellow and gold. And then lastly, we're going to show you how to make this beautiful dishcloth. And this is a variegated yarn from um, Premier Yarns. Uh, it's called Home Cotton. And so I really love these colors. So we're going to go to a close up now and show you one of the five uh, videos that projects that you see here and make sure that you watch all of them in the um, series. And I want to thank you very much for watching and please be sure to subscribe to our channel. Hey everybody, it's Christina from Maggie'sCrochet.com. Today I'm showing you how to make the Sandcastles dishcloth. Uh, this is an intermediate skill project, mostly just because uh, it includes the long double crochet stitch. Um, if you're not familiar with that, don't worry, I will show you how to do it. And other than that, it's very simple. Uh, so you do need three different colors for this. You want to make sure you use worsted weight cotton yarn for all of your dishcloths. So here we have a white, a yellow and then kind of a gold color. Today I'm going to use um, a little bit brighter colors. I've got a pure white, a bright yellow, and kind of an orange uh, color just to give it a little more contrast uh, and a little make it a little brighter because I like bright colors. You'll need a size H8 crochet hook for this project um, and then of course a yarn needle and whatever scissors or uh, snippers you like to use. All right let's get started. We're going to start with color A. Now we've got three different colors. I'm going to call them A, B, C. Um, and in both the sample I showed you and in the one I'm making here today, color A is going to be my darkest color and color C is going to be my lightest color. Um, the biggest thing is you will need a little bit more of color A than you will of either B or C. So if you're using scraps or um, you know partial skeins of yarn, make sure color A is the one that you have the most of. Like I said, in both the sample and this one, it's also my darkest color. Um, but you'll start with color A and you'll chain 31, which I've got here. And then we'll start by double crocheting in the fourth chain from the hook. One, two, three, four. So I'm just gonna yarn over. 
go right into that chain stitch, grab a loop and pull it through. I've got three loops on my hook now. I'll yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through two. So that's a double crochet. I'm also counting these skipped chain stitches right here as a double crochet. So technically this is two. Then you'll chain one, skip the next chain. So we just worked into this one. We'll skip this one and we'll work a double crochet in the next five chain stitches. So skipping this one, double crochet here, two, three, four, and five. So when you chain one and skip a stitch like that, you're left with this kind of like a little hole there, which we'll use later. All right, so then you'll repeat that three times. So I'll chain one, skip the next chain stitch there, work double crochet in the next five. You'll do that a total of, um, do it a total of four times, three more times after the first one. Then chain one, skip the next uh, the next chain stitch, and at that point you'll only have two left. So in these last two, you'll just have two double crochets. So I'm going to finish this row, and then I'll come back and show you how to continue on from here. So this is what it'll look like at the end of row one. You've got your groups of double crochets with the little uh, chain one spaces in between them. And at each end, you've got uh, just two double crochets, not five. So my next row is going to be in my B color. So I actually want to switch to that in the last stitch of row one. So I'll start my last double crochet as usual. I'll yarn over, down into the stitch, grab a loop, pull it through. I've got three loops on my hook. I'll yarn over and pull through two. But now, instead of continuing to use this uh, A color thread, I'm going to grab my B color, which is this nice bright yellow. I've got a slip knot, get that on my hook. And that's what I'm going to pull through the last two loops there. Now we'll come back to this orange color, so you don't need to fasten it off, just uh, leave it hanging to the side for now. And we're going to work with the uh, B color, which for me is this yellow. You'll chain three, which counts as your first double crochet. So uh, since we're counting that as a double crochet, we won't work in this first orange stitch here. We will work a double crochet in the next stitch. And then we're going to work a long double crochet. Starts off similarly, you'll yarn over, but instead of going into this stitch here, you're going to go into the bottom chain right here. Grab your loop, pull it through, and then make sure you pull up enough yarn so that it's not going to be tight and squished. Then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So now you've got this yellow kind of jutting down into your orange row. You'll do uh, one double crochet in each of the next two double crochets. And two. Then chain one, skip this next double crochet, double crochet in each of the next two. And then we'll repeat. So we're going to do another long double crochet into this um, kind of hole here. So yarn over, go down into that starting chain that we didn't work into, grab a loop, pull it through. Take a minute to uh, pull up enough yarn so that you won't squish all your rows together. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And you'll just continue that across. You'll end with um, a long double crochet into here and then a double crochet into each of these stitches here. So that's row two, and then I'll come back and show you row three. It's very similar, just a little different because we'll be a little offset. Got one double crochet left on the end of round two, but again, I'm gonna change colors. So I'll yarn over, go into the stitch, grab a loop, pull it through, pull through two loops, but then for my last two loops, I'm going to pick up my third color, color C. This is my lightest color. It happens to be white. Got a slip knot, cut that on my hook, and then I will pull the white loop through the two yellow loops on my hook. 
Again, we'll come back to this yellow, so just leave it hanging there for now. For row three, you'll chain three. We're counting that as a uh, double crochet. So we'll double crochet in the next double crochet. Chain one, skip the next double crochet, which was our long double crochet here, so we're going to skip that. But we'll double crochet in the next two. Then we're going to work a long double crochet. It's a little easier now because we're not working into the chain. We'll be working into the top of this stitch here. So yarn over, go down into that stitch, grab a loop, pull it through. Take a minute to pull up your yarn. Make sure you've got enough that you're not going to squish your rows together. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Then double crochet in the next two stitches. Chain one. Skip this long double crochet here. Double crochet in the next two. And we'll continue repeating this um, all the way across. You'll end with, let's see, we'll have a double crochet here, chain one and skip this, and then a double crochet in the last two stitches. Then we'll change back to our orange. Uh, row four is very much like row two, except uh, instead of working into the bottom chain, you'll be working into uh, this yellow row here, as I just showed you with this. So I'm going to uh, continue working my dishcloth. You're repeating rows three and four, but you're alternating three colors. So just remember that you need to change color at the end of every row. And it should turn out great. So I'm going to do this. You've got a total of 16 rows. Then I'll come back and show you how to do the edging. So after you finish row 16, it should look a little something like this. Notice that you end with the uh, cut A color that you started with. Uh, you can finish off your B and C colors because we'll, we'll also use the A for our border. You can see along the edge here how we've got all the strands from carrying over uh, our colors between the rows. So we're just going to put a nice little simple border to kind of um, keep those in place. So at the end of round 16, you'll go uh, over to your edging, chain one and turn. We're going to work three single crochets in this first double crochet here. You always work a couple of extra stitches in the corners um, so that the corner turns nicely and lays flat. So do three single crochets right there. And then I'll just do one single crochet per stitch across. So one single crochet in the top of every double. And when you get to the, uh, the chain one spaces, just go right under that chain and single crochet there as well. So I'll do this all the way across. When I get to the last double crochet of the round, I'll do three double crochets there as well. When you're working down the side, of course, you want to make sure you catch all these little uh, carryover loops. And you want to aim for about two single crochets per double crochet. So I'll try to get two single crochets in here, two single crochets here, etc. Uh, down the length. And you can adjust that. You may need to depending on exactly how tight or loose you stitch, but that's a good starting point. Then three more double, three more single crochets there in the corner. You'll work one in each loop of the uh, chain that we didn't use to start with. Three in the corner and then up the other side as well. And then I'll come back and show you round two of the edging, which is also uh, very similar and very easy. Just finished my first round of the edging. So I'm going to join my last stitch and my first stitch together with a slip stitch. So I'll just go right into that first stitch, grab a loop, pull it through, pull that through the loop already on my hoop. Then I'll chain one. And the second round is even easier. You're just going to do one single crochet in each single crochet around. And when you get to a corner where you worked a group of three, you'll work three in the middle one of the previous three group. So I just worked one into the one on the right. Here's the one in the center. So I'll work three single crochets into that one. Then one single crochet into the last one and then continue with one across. Then here's another group of three. So I'll work three into the middle one of that and continue down the side 
until I come back to the beginning again where I'll join with a slip stitch and then finish off and weave in my ends. So there's that one made with all the bright colors. Of course, now that I made it, it kind of reminds me of candy corn. And then here's this one, uh, a little more monochromatic, um, a little more subtle. So both look great. You know, it just depends on what kind of look you're going for. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions, uh, please do let me know down in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out. I'd also love to know uh, if you make this dishcloth, did you decide to go with the more monochromatic color scheme or do it a little brighter with a little more contrast? I'd love to know and you can let me, uh, let me know down in the comments as well. In the description you'll find the pattern and the materials you need to make this project. Thanks for watching guys! And this is the third part, um, which we're going to do the edging round. So um, at the end of row 13, so what that is, is to just go between these two shells and go into that space right there and work a single crochet like that.